this is a rivalry that goes way back. This is the 111th all-time meeting. They did not play last year due to COVID. The series began all the way back in 1894. And Mike, imagine a lot of butterflies down there. They didn't play this last year, so there's been two years of buildup to get back to this rivalry game. Well, there's a lot of buildup, but there's so much riding on these games. If you think about bragging rights are one thing for the players, but in the recruiting wars in the state of New Mexico, the winner of this game has a clear-cut advantage. Ethan Albertson will kick things off for the Aggies. And back deep for New Mexico. Manny Logan Green and Chad Alexander are deep, and here we go. Line drive kick, and it'll be brought out. With some running room, nice return by Manny Logan Green, still on his feet across the 35. Helmets are already coming off. The ball was fumbled, recovered by New Mexico. So Terry Wilson, how about this? Finishes high school, goes to Oregon, then goes to junior college, then to Kentucky for three strong seasons, and then now to New Mexico. Won 17 games, a mark of 17 and eight as the Wildcats starting quarterback. The only quarterback in school history, more than 3,000 passing yards and over 1,000 career rushing yards. His road to New Mexico, he announced his transfer and they tried to keep it secret for a while, but they announced it in May, and there's been a buzz about the program. He started last week 13 for 13. Bobby Cole, the running back, and here we go. Wilson, plenty of time. Going deep down the field, he's got two receivers there. Caught! Huge play to start the game. What a throw from Wilson. Zach no, Scruggs, sorry, Mike. It's Zach Scruggs who gets in there and makes that catch. Don't usually want to have two receivers in the same spot, but when they're both wide open, I guess that raises your chance to come up with a completion. Great throw by Terry Wilson. Wilson, again with time, finds an open receiver, gets a block, and that's Manny Logan Green. Close to a first down, it's going to be short of it. You're going to see two receivers come together. And then part of it is there's two defenders there. But when you're that wide open and it's a perfect pass by Terry Wilson, it comes up money. They did roll it a short of the first down. So second and short, they'll toss it to Cole. And Cole is going to bulldoze his way in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Lobos. Quite a start there, Mike, for the Lobos. Big play through the air and then finishing it up with some power into the end zone by Bobby Cole. He lowered his head and gets in there. Bobby Cole, a COVID senior, he's a super senior, taking advantage of the extra year, one of the leaders of the team. He finished last season with back-to-back 100-yard -back games. Led the team in rushing a year ago. Andrew Shelley on for the extra point. Drive four plays, 64 yards, only takes a minute. And Shelley's extra point is up, and it is good. A perfect start for the Lobos. You see Bobby Cole just kind of gets a little bit on the edge there. Look at the blocks up front, and then the drive. He's not going to be denied to get into that end zone. Well, they, he singled out. Coach Gonzalez, I asked him about guys it's sort of fulfilling what this Lobo program he wants to be about. And one of the guys he talked about, Bobby Cole, as you see the scoring drive, just 60 seconds, and four plays, 64 yards, the big play, the bomb to Scruggs that set him up inside the red zone. Oh. 
And no chance at a return. Jonah Johnson. First week at UTEP, it was a struggle. Just 8 for 24, 90 yards. Then last week at San Diego State, throws for a career-high 326 yards, 34 completions. And if you didn't see the game, the three picks, it looks like he had a bad night. That was not the case. Uh, a couple of those times he trusted his receiver, and the DB just made a great play. You know, I always think there should be a separate stat for balls that come right off the receiver's hands and turn into an interception because two of those interceptions, that was the case for Jonah Johnson. So here is the air raid offense. They'll look to throw it about 80% of the time. Juan Price is the running back, and they'll get it out quickly. And a nice spin move, but New Mexico there to stop it before it turned into a big play. And they are they are talented at receiver. That's Terrell Warner. Warner last week, 10 catches for 79 yards. And 10 catches, a career high. And the first Aggie with 10 catches in the game since 2018. Now they're going to be missing Dominic Jacinto, their top receiver, broken arm. So he's going to be out for an extended period of time. Second and seven. Johnson gets rid of it. He was looking for Jared Wyatt. So it's going to bring up third down. A third down's been a struggle for them this year, just 10 for 35, 29%. Five wide. And they give it to Price. He's going to try to run for it. Will not get it. Stopped at the 33-yard line. And the Aggies will be forced to punt. Patrick Peak with the tackle. I don't mind that call on third down. It's... it's if you think about it defensively, they know <laughs> where you're at and the situation you're in. So I don't mind giving myself a little room to punt and play a little field position here in the first quarter. Josh Carlson on a punt, averaging more than 43 yards per punt. Manny Logan Green is deep. He's only got one return, but he made the most of it, 32 yards on the return. Pretty good looking punt here, and it's going to be a fair catch at the 16-yard line, and that's where the Lobos will have it. A terrific start for New Mexico. They lead 7-0. Welcome back. See military here. We'll talk a little bit more about this important day of remembrance a little bit later in the broadcast. It's the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Good start for New Mexico. They lead 7-0. Ari Wolf, Mike Lamb, glad you're with us on stadium. Lobos looking to continue their winning ways. And Wilson hands it off, trying to get it out onto the edge. And there is a late flag there, Luke Wysong. And I believe it's a face mask. Wysong, a true freshman who's already really clicked with Terry Wilson. They looked for him to have a big role as a true freshman in the offense. It's maybe Caleb Mills, number 12. Let's see. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 12. 15 yards added to the end of the run. And it was First Caleb down. Mills here. Yeah, it's pretty clear that he's got that. But look at Bobby Cole with that block over there. Wysong is going to be a big part of this offense. He has really shown himself to the coaches. And he is Terry Wilson's proclaimed favorite receiver. And Luke has, comes from a family of athletes. His dad, Adam, played here at New Mexico. Apparently his brother, Evan, may be the best athlete of the bunch. And Wilson fakes the handoff, wants to keep it, and he'll get buried for a loss of a couple. Dalton Bowles gets in there for the tackle for a loss. There he is, number 23, a sophomore from Roswell, New Mexico. So much is incumbent upon Terry Wilson, both these quarterbacks for that matter. You know, when you think about You've got to run the ball, you've got to read it. When it's a passing play, you've got to look at the defense. And it was the same thing with the run there for Terry Wilson. Whoa, high snap. Wilson's got to get on it. Loose football, fight for it. And it will remain New Mexico football. Kyle Stapley, they rely on this guy, their center. What happens here, Mike? 
uh, gets away from him. It's just, uh, you, if you think about that, you've got to block somebody who's right on. You're trying to get that ball exactly where it's going to be. That's just a physical error thrown up too high over Terry Wilson's head. This guy's such a leader on the team. Coach, who were telling us some of the players say yes, sir, and no, sir to him. <laughs> Yet he's not a coach. Yet. He's the starting center. The so third and 29. I mean, they'll keep it on the ground with Bobby Cole. Picks up a nice chunk, but they will be forced to punt as he stopped just shy of the 34-yard line. Chris Ojo with the stop. Aaron Rodriguez will come on to punt, averaging 42.6 yards per punt. From Newhall, California. Lawrence Dixon is deep for the Aggies. And not a very good punt. And it takes an Aggie bounce, and they'll have great field position at their own 41-yard line. And we'll, we'll let you know who wins that in a little while. But we'll let you guys to get engaged with us. Get over to Twitter, at Stadium. Tell us what you like. First and 10 for the Aggies. Johnson trying to step up. Eludes some trouble. Still on his feet and broke. Out late. Deion Hunter, 42, is in on the stop. New Mexico State keeps the football. Understand the cat and mouse game that's going to go on here between Rocky Long, the defensive coordinator for the Lobos, and what he's trying to do to Jonah Johnson. He knows he hasn't started a lot of football games. And he also knows he's a very different quarterback when he's under pressure. We've got a timeout on the field. The Aggies use their first timeout. Lobos leads. Welcome back. 9.50 to go in the opening quarter. Lobos lead the Aggies 7 to nothing. That big fella right there, number 76, Sage Dockstatter. He was drafted by the CFL last summer, a second-round pick by Toronto. He said no thank you and is hoping to go in the NFL draft next spring. He's projected to be a day three draftee somewhere between rounds four through seven. He's one of the captains. And the thing I like most, he's 6'7", 350, and he's a vegetarian. How does he get enough to eat? Johnson to throw. A lot of contact on the outside, and there is the flag. Flag was late. Pressure in the face of Jonah Johnson. I see Corey Hightower, number 96, in coverage. One of 14 super seniors on the team. They only started two games last year, but they picked the right ones, the games they won at the end of the season. This is definitely part of what's going to happen here. You've seen pressure come from the left side. That time it came from the right side of it. And this is Rocky Long. It's classic him. He's going to show you one thing, and then here it comes. You've got two guys that come free, and you're sitting here in the seat yourself that Am I going to be able to block these guys? Juwan Price has got to pick one of the two. Johnson gets it out quickly. Catch is made by Jared Wyatt. Picks up eight yards. And, and back, I want to get your take, Mike Lamb. How can you be 350 pounds and be a vegetarian? I, I just do help me understand the calories. Well, I'll tell you this. I'm thrilled with the prospect because I've found a vegetarian that weighs more than I do. <laughs> so you're feeling better about well, yourself. Oh, That's good. Oh, my gosh. It's, He's my new guy. Second and short. Johnson goes up over the top, has a receiver, but too much on the throw. Robert Downs, the third, number four, the intended target. The big key, it seems, for New Mexico State, when they can get decent pass protection, then Johnson really has a chance to play at a high level. That's, that's everything that we're talking about. Here he is. Look how big he is. Look where he's got his hands. I mean, it is just kind of unfair how he is. He's got good hands. He's got good feet. So when you're talking about NFL and what they want, that's exactly what they want to see. Well, they love him. This is, he could have left, but he wanted to stay, even though they didn't play all of last year due to COVID. 
Doug Martin talked about it. it's like starting from scratch. Johnson to throw, and the throw a little bit high, but still caught by Wyatt. So nice job there. Wyatt's already graduated. Played Juco ball at Navarro College. Watch the catch. Look at that. One hand, sticks it in there. I don't know about it. Want to talk a little athleticism? That's, That's what I'm seeing from Jared White. Johnson, flag is down. It is caught. I think in all likelihood this is coming back. Warner with the catch, but the flag was thrown in the area of offensive holding. Number 85. And it is a hold against New Mexico Third State. Down. You're seeing a pretty consistent attack on the right side of that Aggie offensive line. First and 20. Johnson, it's complete, it's Warner. And Warner brought down at the 25 yard line, so just four yards to go to pick up the first down. After that holding penalty, sometimes it's hard to even think about picking up the first down, but they pick up a big chunk there. Terrell Warner trying to pick up where he left off last week, 10 catches versus San Diego State. Second and four. Johnson gets rid of it. He had players in his face, had to move off. You know, every quarterback has a place in the pocket they want to deliver that football, and they moved him off his spot there and it affected the throw. Something that the Aggies have been dealing with, they changed their right guard and right tackle. Carson Ferris at right guard this weekend, Stephon Townsend, and they're still trying to find their rhythm because, as you see, that's where the pressure's been coming to on Jonah Johnson. All right, third down. Johnson, quick hitter, and it's not a good throw. Garcia Castaneda, the intended target, and then Jonah just frankly rushed that throw. He had time to deliver it. So instead, it's fourth down, and they'll attempt a field goal. Ethan Albertson will come on. He's two for three on the season. There you see Coach Martin talking to his quarterback, Jonah Johnson. Seemed just a little antsy on that throw. A 43-yard attempt. Kick is on the way. Beautiful kick. It is through the uprights. And the Aggies are on the board. So Albertson delivers for the Aggies for 43 yards. He could have made this one for 53 yards. A beautiful kick. Beautiful day. Great day for a rivalry game. We'll be right back. Well, they got behind the chains because of the bad snap by the center, and that really kind of made the second drive just fizzle out. Yeah, well, what's in your playbook when those types of things happen? And I think that's when you kind of go on the defensive. It's like, okay, let's not take something that's bad and make it worse and give someone a scoring opportunity. But Terry Wilson did a good job to scramble back, show some athleticism to cover that up. Bobby Wooden will be the running back to start this series. He's to the right of Terry Wilson. First and 10. Erickson in motion. Wilson wants to throw. Well covered and probably a smart play to just throw it at the feet of Wooden. I want to talk a little bit more about Terry Wilson, Mike. This is a guy who was a two-time team captain at Kentucky, graduated in May of 2020 with a degree in communications. And his accomplishments on the field, one of the only quarterbacks in UK history to win at Florida and at Tennessee. So he has played in huge games. This is his first taste of this rivalry as he completes the pass to Andrew Erickson for a gain of, let's call it, nine yards on the play, but Wilson's not going to be phased by anything he sees. No. You think he'd trade some of those wins in the SEC to get a win here today in this rivalry game? And, and he reminds me 
of a guy who lives in the present moment and plays in the present moment, and that's why he is here playing for the Lobos. Now Derek Warheim's father coached Terry Wilson when he was in high school. That helped the connection process. And they keep it on the ground here with Aaron Dumas, and Dumas has enough for the first down. Three for four today, last week. 22 of 28 here down the middle of the field, and that is caught. Trace Bruckler has been a real pleasant surprise at tight end makes the catch. Watch the pocket. Plenty of time, gets his feet set, boom. 46 yards on the play. They signed him. Ruckler as a wide receiver, moved him to tight end. You can show he's got receiver skills there. Wilson looking downfield, wants it all. Too much on the throw. Again, it was Bruckler. Bruckler sort of started running backwards before he needed to. Had he kept running forward, might have had a chance. You're 100% right. That's exactly what happened there. He turned around, he's looking for the ball and lost it. If he looked over his shoulder, I think he's in the end zone easily with the score. Second and 10. And they'll often look to the sideline and change the play. A lot of responsibility on Wilson. It is a handoff inside the 30. It's Dumas. Brings up third down. And a flag in the backfield. Aaron Dumas is a nice north and south kind of downhill guy. He's an A-gap runner. And you, you, know, you will see him get the first down or get what is there as opposed to trying to take off and make everything a big play. On sportsmanlike conduct, defense, number one, 15-yard penalty. That's number one's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. First down. I did, I did not see that. Devlin Kirkland guilty on the play, and it's going to be first down at the 15-yard line. Wilson. They set up the screen beautifully. Blockers in front, the cutback. Is he in? Yes, touchdown Lobos. Connor Whithoff gets the touchdown. A tight end's a big part of the drive. First touchdown of the season for Whithoft. He's a redshirt freshman from Tucson, Arizona. Well, they got some players to tie it in. We saw Bruckler with the big play, and then Whithoft gets the touchdown. I think I'm hearing that they are taking another look to see if he gets in. The knee's down there, very hard to tell from that angle. But. They have decided upstairs in the replay booth that the touchdown is good. Andrew Shelley on for the extra point. Kick is on the way, and it is good. So three drives for New Mexico, and they've got two touchdowns. Let's take a look at the penalty. So tell me. <laughs> yeah, you see the fight going on there with number one. So that set up New Mexico for this, Mike. And they set this up beautifully. Coming back the other side, you've got three blockers in front of you. 
Now it's just get your head down, make the move, and fight into the goal line. All right, Kirkland getting some love from his guys. They know they're going to need him to make plays. George Steinkamp will now kick things off for the Lobos, but what a start for New Mexico. These two teams did not meet last year due to COVID. It interrupted. They had played 74 straight years. This is the 100th and 11th meeting between these two schools. Short kick. And one of the up men's going to take it. Oh. And he is going to be put to the turf at the 23 yard line. All right, New Mexico State's got to at least put together a drive, give their defense some time. That's sometimes the problem, Mike, with the air raid offense is they don't take a lot of time off the clock. So we've got a change in quarterback. Dino Malinado is the quarterback. Jonah Johnson, we we're being told, hurt his right hand. Now we'll try to get you more information. They hand it off and no place to go. The Lobos stuff it. All right, here's Jonah talking to his head coach, Doug Martin. And I think he told him, hey, you got to go get see if that hand's right. So this could be big problems for the Lobos. And he misses his receiver. And a flag's going to come in. It's going to go against New Mexico. Yeah, he went up near the head with it. You can't do that. Devin Sanders, anything that's above the shoulder pads was going to get a flag every time. And it's always open to interpretation, but. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 19. At previous plays under further review. Devin gonna... Sanders has got this shot, and he comes up to make the play. And there's this where it's hard, but he's leading with the crown. That's really not that subjective. Is it? No, that's. I'd be surprised if he remains in the game. They've been very clear on the rule throughout the first couple weeks of the college football season. It's just not going to be tolerated. He needed to move that helmet more, to get to the shoulder pad, and not straight on. It's so interesting because now you're talking about nuances as a defensive player, and in the past, nuance is not a word that you would use when you're sitting there and you've got this shot. He's got him, he knows it's dead right, and he's just got to let off on that. You've got to turn your head, you've got to lead with your shoulder. You can't do that anymore. And it's unfair because the receiver is completely defenseless. Looking back at the quarterback, puts the football, and takes that shot. Sanders are waiting to find out his fate for the rest of this afternoon. Sanders, a senior from San Diego, California. Had a good week, opening week, had four tackles and a fumble recovery. And there is Rocky Long. And it's it's kind of fitting they're both in the shot there because Rocky Long's had such a huge impact on Danny Gonzalez, both when Danny was a player and then Danny as a coach. And then deciding to come here and take the job, Rocky Long has been his mentor throughout. And pretty unique that your mentor then comes back to be your defensive coordinator. I think it's a really neat story. And Rocky Long won a lot of football games in the Mountain West, both here at New Mexico and at San Diego State. And he told the story about how he had to kind of recruit and really prod Rocky Long to come back to coach with him as an assistant because it went from being the mentor to being the pupil and now Danny Gonzalez ends up being the mentor. Well, this is taking quite a long time which leads me to believe that they think it's a pretty tough decision. 
Because it, it can be pretty harsh. If they rule it's targeting, you're done. Uh, Jonah Johnson trying to tell his coach, hey, look, I can throw. Put me back in the game. But he does keep reaching down to play with that right wrist in the hand. All right, the headset's coming off, and I believe they have come to a decision. After further review, there is no foul on the field for targeting. It's third down. Now that's good news for the Lobos. Wow. So, wow. I don't know what they saw that was different than what we saw. But New Mexico, I think, catches a break here. I don't understand what the rule is there. Well, they're going to have to explain that to me at the half. So third and nine. Johnson is back in the game at quarterback, so that's good news for Aggie fans. Question is, how accurate will he be? Got plenty of time, surveys the field, checks it down and misses his intended target, Garcia Castaneda. So that'll bring up fourth down. So, so far, the offense just has not been there. New Mexico State has a total of 38 yards offensively. And in the grand scheme of things, that's a pretty easy throw right there. Yeah. You know, it's in front of the quarterback. You're probably really only throwing the ball about 10 or 12 yards, and it was clearly behind the receiver. So I think there's still some lingering effects there on Jonah Johnson, what's going on with his wrist. Josh Carlson to punt. Manny Logan Green. He's going to step up and get the fair catch at the 34-yard line. It's a pretty good field position. More Possibly the number one pick in the draft. It's Bobby Cole. And Cole picks up seven yards on the ground. Lots of offense so far for the Lobos. They're up to 134 total yards. And Bobby Cole has a rushing touchdown of the game, his first touchdown of the season. Erickson will line up in the backfield on this play. Now he'll go in motion. Wilson, nice pocket, throws it out, and it is caught. Nice throw there. Keontae Lanier with the catch. Freshman played at Long Beach Poly, one of the real top high school programs in America. Watch Keontae go up and get this thing. Two defenders. He knows he's going to get hit. That's why they call him Big Play Keontae, Keontae Lanier. True freshman. I really like him. He can do it all from multiple receiver positions. Wilson with the blitz coming. They pick it up, and now he'll go down. He is sacked. Lazarus Williams gets his first sack of the season, and the Aggies needed a big play, and Williams delivers. Lazarus Williams coming up in that A gap, and it, it, it's interesting how you're looking at Terry Wilson, and he's been so comfortable back there, and contrast that with Jonah Johnson, who's been rushed all the time. A late blitz through the A-gap. Got him. So bring up second long. They'll set up the screen. Bobby Wooden makes the catch. He picks up a few yards, but it's still going to bring up third and long. On the day, the Lobos one for two on third down. Austin Cook out there a little bit late from his guard spot, or that could have been a big play. But that's, it's so hard to try to time it with a lineman who's out in space when you're the running back. And Wilson has total command of whatever they're going to do offensively. He can change it into any play that he wants. And the blitz is coming. Wilson gets to the outside. He's going to take off and run. And stays on his feet and dives. 
And he needed to get to the 36-yard line, and he does to pick up a New Mexico first down. If you're going to blitz Terry Wilson off the left side, that leaves the right side open, right-handed quarterback, and somebody that has that type of ability and that type of mobility. I, I really think that yeah, that was kind of a give me for him. He knew it was coming, saw it, knew how to react, and he went and picked up the first down. I love that his, his field awareness that he needed 16 yards, and he gets 16 yards. Now Johnson is heading to the locker room. We will keep you updated. Wilson on play action. Going downfield, got a wide open receiver. And the throw just a little bit off target, looking for Manny Logan Green. Little bit too much on this. Manny Logan Green, and oh, he got, he got a his chance. Yeah. yeah. It was a chance there. I think he'd tell you, you should have caught it. Get two hands on it. Manny or Terry? Uh, both. <laughs> Certainly Terry. <laughs> and he is growing personally and with his awareness of what to do on the field. This would be a 49-yard attempt for Andrew Shelley. He's made a 53-yarder in his career. And this is missed pretty badly to the left. Didn't get a good piece of the football. So this will give the Aggies good field position. Now Jonah Johnson headed back to the locker rooms. The question is, will it be Eget or Maldonado? Eget was certainly in competition with Johnson for the starting job, and then it became clear to the coaching staff that Johnson was the guy. But interestingly enough, it, it's Maldonado who's getting the opportunity in this game. So let's see if someone could do some digging, find out what's going on down there. Maybe something's going on with Weston Eget, and that's why it's Maldonado. So an opportunity for Dino Maldonado. It's a Lobo dance team having fun. It's a beautiful day. A little, little hot. Temperatures in the low 90s. Maldonado, the rush is coming. He's in trouble. He's going to throw this one up. And he is very fortunate that no one was in the area. Uh, this is a real tough spot for a quarterback who has not played at this level to come into a rivalry game. Probably didn't expect to play today. That's not an excuse, but boy, no. it's a lot on his shoulders right now. Well, especially in air raid offense because, you know, everything comes out there. It's a combination that's sent to you. You've got to pick the play. You've got to call the protection, and then you've got to figure out what your receiver is going to do. So, no, it is not an easy task. Maldonado. Pump fakes a couple times and then completes it. It's going to be a gain of nine. Jared Wyatt makes the catch, and that was a good-looking throw. Yeah, it was. And Jared Wyatt did a nice thing. He started to come back a little bit there, and, and he's trying to help out his quarterback. And I think for Jared Wyatt, who I mentioned had 10 catches last week, he's already got a couple in this game. He's going to have to help this guy out. Okay, Tony. And we've got a timeout. New Mexico State's going to use their second timeout. Just 16 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. And again, no surprise that there would be some confusion as you've got to go to the backup quarterback in the first quarter. Third and short. This is where someone with the air raid, you know, they wish that he could just get under center and pick up the short distance play to move the chains. And Maldonado will run for it. Plenty of room. Great blocking. Maldonado, it's a foot race. And he'll be caught from behind at the 22. But a brilliant play call from Doug Martin. And the Aggies in business. Love this. Got a little zone keeper here. And he reads it. Gets a block. Gets a block. And look at the wheels. Also, look at the wheels coming behind him. Yeah, Jarek Reed there comes from behind. He's a great athlete. But what I like the move there. You know, he had the great block, and then he made that one move to cut it back towards the inside to turn it into a huge play. 37 yards on the play. And that's the end of quarter number one. A lot of big plays in the first 15 minutes. We will step away after one. New Mexico leads New Mexico State 14-3. Stay with us for more Mountain West football on Stadium. Welcome back. 
Aggies on the move. You know, Maldonado done a nice job coming in in relief. That is a completion to the 20 yard line to Cole Herity. Here's a recap of the opening quarter for New Mexico. Terry Wilson, eight for 12, 135 yards and a touchdown. Unfortunately, Jonah Johnson left the game with either right hand or wrist injury. And their normal backup, Weston Eget, is hurt. That's why Maldonado having an opportunity to play. Uh, the New Mexico offense has looked very good when they haven't hurt themselves with mistakes. Aggies looking for their first touchdown. And Maldonado held it a little longer than he wanted to, took a pretty good hit. And there is a flag down at the 19-yard line on the near side. Pass interference, the receiver was taken down. There is no foul on the field for a low block. Huh. Second down. Wow. First ever FBS action for Maldonado. And I've got to tell you, Mike, all things considered, he actually looks pretty calm and composed out there for the Aggies. He didn't have a chance to worry about it. I guess him. not. No stress. <laughs> Blitz is coming. Maldonado delivers the ball, and it's incomplete. The receiver was open there. Garcia Castaneda. They've got some real talent at the wide receiver position. It's just about getting, getting them the football and see if they can make guys miss in space. It's going to be a field goal attempt for the Aggies. Ethan Albertson looked great on his opening kick. 38-yard attempt. Kick is on the way. Hold everything. Before the kick, we've got a whistle. Offside. Defense number 58 into the neutral zone with contact. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Do you consider going for it now, Mike, or do you still kick the field goal? Four yards. You know, what are your chances really of converting that? And I'd, I would try to get some points here. Well, that's what they're going to do. Albertson from five yards closer from 33 yards. Kick is on the way, and it is good. Strong start in this opening half from Albertson as he's two for two on field goals. And now New Mexico State within a score. So, you know, I'll be watching from, uh, from ground level. Manny Logan Green and Chad Alexander are deep for the Lobos. Albertson to kick it off. Opening minutes, second quarter. And Albertson, a strong boot. And it'll be brought out by Manny Logan Green. And he's met by a couple of Aggies at the 22-yard line. But Derek Warheim, the offensive coordinator, has got to be pleased with his offense. Two of the drives resulting in touchdowns, the other in a missed field goal. Uh, Derek has known Terry Wilson since Wilson was a ninth grader. So they go way back. Derek's father coached Terry in high school. And what an addition to have a guy who went 17 and 8 as a starter in the SEC to come and be your quarterback. They were seeking, that's what Danny Gonzalez wanted, we want a grad transfer quarterback. And they found one of the best in America. And here Wilson finds Erickson. And Erickson is undercut, but not before they fix up the first down. He's brought down at the 36 yard line. Wilson having a strong first half, 10 of 14, 148 yards and a touchdown. And that was before the last play. Tack on another 14, he's at 162 yards. Dumas runs the ball effectively 
I'm telling you, Mike, if they can pick up seven yards running yeah. the ball on first down, boy, that opens up the playbook on second and third. I commented on this before. Aaron Dumas is just such a north and south guy, and he is able to get that push. Think about your playbook. What happens here? If you pick up six or seven on that running play, and now you're Terry Wilson, you're thinking to yourself, man, I, I can do anything I want right now. And defensively, you know that. He, it's all open to him, and you've got to protect against everything. Setting up the screen, and no place to go. No, Alexander breaks a tackle. It's still going to result in a loss of six yards on the play, and it's going to bring up third and nine. Because the Aggies were not fooled that time. Not fooled and really didn't get a chance to develop. And that's one thing about it. if you're going to run screens, and you, you need to be able to have your lineman out there in timing. The, the throw's got to be in exactly the right spot. Third nine, blitz is coming. Wilson connects, it's Erickson. And it'll be first to 10 at the 20. Great throw from Wilson. Andrew Erickson, the coach has said he's, you know, really the most versatile receiver that they've got. And he's an engineering major. He's real smart. And here's the craziest part. He's a former walk-on. He redshirted 2018, then 2019 tore his ACL, so he was a double redshirt in 2020. And you add the COVID year, he could still be playing for the Lobos in 2024. That's insane. That is crazy. First to 10. The double reverse. And the Aggies were not fooled. Luke Wysong was hoping for a big play. And we've got a Lobo lineman Andrew, shaking up. Andrew Erickson, watch him go up. I mean, it's kind of a little, little, looks a little gronkish out there, doesn't he? He's got a, a physical superiority. You're comparing Gronk, who's what, like 6'4", 270, uh, just, 280? I just like it. Wait, okay. he's physical. And he's a young guy. Who knows what's going to happen? Look, I think that Andrew is going to appreciate the compliment. I don't know that, you know, he's gotten a Gronk comparison before. I think he's going to like that. He's going to find, he's going to, where's Mike Lamb? Is he's going to become is, friends with this guy. Is Gronkish a term? Or is <laughs> you just made it one. <laughs> I compliment. Yeah, Gronk got off to a pretty good start on Thursday night. Tampa Bay looked like they were in Super Bowl form. Jan Koviak, the injured player, he'll come out. Second long. And Wilson's going to keep it, and he'll get stopped at the 22-yard line. I really like the way that the Aggies are keeping their responsibilities because they're, the pitch could have been there. They really kind of forced Terry Wilson to turn that up, and that's probably was the one option that was not going to have big returns. So credit the Aggie defense with turning that play back in and keeping it short. Lobos have been good on third down, three for five. Alexander in motion now. Step back next to his quarterback, provide a little extra protection. And we've got confusion as the center there, Stapley, hadn't hiked the football. Ball start. Offense, number 73. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. I mean, they called on Kate Briggs, but the other, him and three other guys were guilty. Everybody thought that um, they were going on one, except for the center. You played some center, right? Not for long. You got to be really intelligent to play the position. <laughs> Which uh, it's interesting because both these centers are super bright. Kyle Stapley, <laughs> and uh, so I don't. I don't think it was a mental error. Third and 17. Flag is down. They keep it on the ground. Nifty run. Gets it all the way down to the 14-yard line, but a flag is back at the line of scrimmage. Michael Bow made the tackle on Chad Alexander. Illegal formation. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Third down. 
Uh, I'll tell you one thing that is not going to make Derek Werheim, the offensive coordinator, happy because you, you know you've got to play like that. You gash them, you put yourself in business, and you didn't get lined up right. We found out that Jonah Johnson is questionable to return with a wrist injury. My courtesy of the uh, SID, Andrew Stern from New Mexico State. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, almost the play right there. Looking for Andrew Erickson. Got his hands on the football, couldn't secure it. Well, he got himself open, wide open. The ball was delivered right there. Nice job by Terry Wilson, just to drop. So Andrew Shelley will come on for a 49-yard attempt. First field goal was 49 as well. He missed that one badly. Let's see if he can make up for it here. And again, he pulls it to the left. So the Aggies come up with the stop when we come back. Aggies down by eight. All right, make sure to uh, scan that QR code. All right, first and 10 for the Aggies from their own 32. Maldonado in there, going up the sideline. Good coverage. Well, Maldonado in there in relief. Jonah Johnson, the starter, is questionable to return with a wrist injury. And the throw, not on target, looking for Jared Wyatt. So to bring up third down for the Aggies, here's a look at their drive chart. First four possessions have resulted in two field goals. Third down so far today, they're one for five. Let's see if the Lobos bring pressure. It looks like they're just gonna rush four. And they do just bring four. Maldonado, and he gets hit on the throw. It's incomplete. We've got a flag down, and someone's lost their helmet. It's the quarterback. I got a feeling this is going against the Lobos. It's never a good thing when the quarterback's helmet comes off. Joey Noble, 98, one of the Lobos in the area. They love Noble. He's an undersized guy, but he's a terrific player, plays hard. He had to sit out the first half of their opener due to a targeting penalty he had in the second half mm -hmm. of their season finale a year ago against Fresno. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 58, grasping the back of the helmet opening. 15-yard penalty, first down. So 58 is Cody Moon, a freshman from right here in Albuquerque. Let's see if, the, yeah, Moon's on the outside there. He gets by the tackle, and oh yeah, he didn't mean to, but he ended up taking the helmet with him. That's an easy call. And it's been consistent. The pressure has been coming on the right side of that offensive line. Well, no shocker, they want to stay away from coming after their left tackle, who's arguably their best player. We talked about Sage Doxtatter. So if you're going to bring pressure, bring it on the other side. First to 10 for the Aggies. Maldonado, good throw, and that is caught right in front of the New Mexico bench. Corey Hightower in coverage is Castaneda. Garcia Castaneda with the catch. One thing about Hightower's injury, he'll be the first Lobo in 127 years of football here to win a letter five years. So that COVID year is helping guys uh, change the record books changing history here, the Lobos program, and all across America with guys taking advantage of the extra year. Amari Samuels, the ball carrier, and he picks up a first down for the Aggies. You're, you're thinking about the extra years, and a lot of these players have taken advantage, like getting master's degrees. Sure. Not just football. Nice pocket for Maldonado. Delivers it out in the flat. 
and immediately brought down is Samuels by Jarek Reed. Reed's a real good player. First it seemed the coach said he wasn't sure what to make of Jarek Reed, thought maybe he was a little bit cocky, and he's realized actually he's just confident. And that is a textbook tackle. See, that's the way you've got to do it. You put your head to the side because if your head's in the middle like in the good old days, that will get you thrown out of the game. The coach said in terms of attitude and productivity, Jarek Reed did a full 180-degree turn. And Maldonado on target again. A lot of big hits out there. Here it comes. Watch what's going on out here. Levels read, quick throw. But that's kind of the hallmark of this Lobo defense. This is what Rocky Log wants to do. This is what Danny Gonzalez wants to be known for, to be physical. He said, we want to be the team you hate to have to come down and play. Third down. Maldonado has time, has a receiver caught. There is a flag down behind the play. It's back-to-back -back catches there for Andre Bodison. Personal foul, roughing a passing, defense. Number 54, after distance to the goal, automatic first down. So Langston Murray is the nose tackle coming around. And boy, it is so close. A really and, nice catch. Oh. Using your body to shield from the defender. So 30 yards of this drive have come via penalty against the Lobo. So it's first and 10. Maldonado, this could be a trick play, and it is. He'll throw to the end zone, caught! Touchdown, Aggies! Tomas Whitford, the score. And Garcia Castaneda throws the touchdown pass. A little trickery. The double pass, why not? You've got to make sure that the person that's catching it and throwing it is behind the line of scrimmage. So it's a lateral. Clean play. That is a thing of beauty for the Aggies. Albertson on for the extra point. Doug Martin's already going to win my Coach of the Week award by not going for two here. <laughs> Don't chase the points early, right, Mike? Ever, ever. <laughs> But do you know how many coaches yeah. don't get right. They that? just go for two here, and then when it doesn't work, you're like, oh, goodness, that's going to affect the game in the fourth quarter. So they will go for the extra point, try to make it a one-point game. We believe the reps, you know, all plays are reviewed upstairs. I'm not sure from this angle if we're going to be able to see. Now, it's clearly a backwards pass here. Yes. He was inside the 16. That ball was caught at the 17. And then I love how he still, like, faked one foot forward before he made the throw. And the defender bit on it, and the tight end Whitford was wide open. Now Maldonado was clearly a yard in front. It was a lateral, and you can't step into the throw. So Albertson on for the extra point. Scoring drive, eight plays, 68 yards, two minutes, 45 seconds, aided by a couple of penalties on New Mexico and Albertson and he'd been doing a great job that one barely squeaked in the left upright we've got ourselves a football game how about that Whitford the score Aggies within one we've got a one-point game and let's take another look at the touchdown Tied in on the end of the line to the left. There we go. Garcia Castanado throws it, unfortunately. Yeah. 
he was so close to being uh, out of bounds. Was almost out of bounds. Can that you imagine? A, a disaster. And the Lobos will take a knee. Manny Logan Green thought, you know, I'm not going to bring this one out. So this has turned into quite a football game. It was 14-3, 10 straight points from the Aggies. Our Wolf alongside Mike Lamb. Glad you're with us on Stadium for Mountain West Football. It's a rivalry game that goes way back to the 19th century. They're playing today for the 100th and 11th edition. They did not play last year due to COVID. Renewing acquaintances. And Coach Danny Gonzalez made it quite clear. He's like, while I respect their coaches and players, I don't like New Mexico State. Raise some eyebrows. There's normally some in-state love, but not on this Saturday. And Wilson gets it out. Broken tackle there. And the Lobos turn it into a solid gain as they get it out to the 31-yard line. Kirkland makes the stop on Logan Green. Yeah, but that's all effort right there. If, you, if you're sitting there and say, oh, what? It was Manny Logan Green running the ball, cutting it back inside where he was going to get hit. But that's what made that a nice game. Wilson gets it to the outside again, and it's going to be enough for a first time, a first down, excuse me, Manny Green, the first down. Josh Ferguson, the tackle for the Aggies. And the completions and yards keep accumulating for Terry Wilson Jr. He's now 15 of 20, 183 yards, and a touchdown. You know, the growth from the first game to the second game and how much more comfortable he is, obviously. They'll keep it on the ground with Bobby Cole, and Cole runs over the defender and picks up the first down. Caleb Mills on the wrong side of that contact. They gapped out on this, and there's the kickout block. You got to love that by Jankowiak. Again, it's Cole, this time a gain of three on first down. And that's a little bit of a wrinkle that Derek Werheim, the offensive coordinator, told us. They've been running they've been running a lot of inside zone, a lot of inside zone, and that's what everybody's gotten into, and now everybody's fighting outside. So now they're going to run gap, which means you're blocking down and somebody kicks out, and you get great angles on it. Plenty of time on the play clock. Blitz is coming. Wilson in trouble. Throws downfield and it's incomplete. Luke Wysong, the intended target. It'll bring up third down. Luke Wysong's going to want to have that one back because he's really made a reputation for himself early now in his career, and that's why he's become a favorite of Terry Wilson because he's been coming up with those plays. But nice throw, of Terry Wilson on the move and in trouble. Third down, Wilson. That is complete, but it is short of the first down. So they have the ball at the 44-yard line. Wysong makes the catch and decision time here on fourth and one. And they have not attempted a fourth down play yet this season. And Bobby Cole, the way he runs at short yardage, you figure just give it to the redshirt senior, 34, and see if he can pick up the first down, but hold everything. New Mexico State uses their third and final timeout. So we'll step away and we come back. Big play, fourth down for the Lobos. And we've got fourth down coming up for the Lobos. Biggest play of the first half, fourth and one in Aggies territory. Bobby Cole in at running back. And certainly if he's as physical as he's been throughout this first half, expect him to get the football and run over somebody. Don't be surprised by a sneak by Terry Wilson, who's under center. It's Cole, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the Aggie defense comes up with the stop. Man, the penetration. Think about Frank Spaziani, defensive coordinator. Man, he just slants it. They come in through the gap. Caleb make... Mills, wow. Wow. That's why I'm a big fan of the sneak there. Look at the penetration. I mean, that's just 
a lot of grit, but everybody is slanting to the left. Everybody had a gap, and the penetration is what got the ball turned over. And now think about it. So if you're the Aggies, you're in great field position after that stop. And they found out that they've got a real capable backup in Dino Maldonado. He's been really solid, 7 for 12, thrown a touchdown pass. They've got plenty of time, and he's going to complete that pass. And the ball comes out. New Mexico is saying they have it, waiting for an official signal. The officials are discussing it. And it's New Mexico football. Cody Moon comes away with it for the Lobos. Huge turn of events there. You see the right here slow down. And no, I don't, did he have the football? Oh. Is he down? All right, the ball is loose. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. The ball know. never I hit the know. ground. That's the perfect look right there. That's an interception. Unless the whistle had blown already, in which case the play would be dead. Mm -mm -mm. Not Malton, I don't do anything wrong there. He's got the ball. He yeah. doesn't ever really have, have it. Possession. Ball stays up and then just right into the hands oh. of Cody Moon. Is like, you know what? I'll take that. First interception for Moon. Talk about for Moon being the right place at the right yeah. time. You didn't have to really move for that one. He may have many more interceptions, but none <laughs> that are going to fall into his lap quite like that. In that case, fall into, <laughs> fall into your shoulder pads. All right, first and 10 for the Lobos. Wilson, pressure coming, picked up nicely. Wide open receiver, and that is caught. Manny Logan Green. Manny Logan Green's coming to life, isn't he? Out of that H-back spot. First and 10, Wilson. It is caught, but he was out of bounds. Terry Wilson just holding the ball a little bit too long there. A little bit too long, throws the ball too late. The ball's thrown just a second earlier. Logan Green, by the way, leads the team with five catches for 43 yards. Kyle Jarvis there was a the player who made the catch. But he's out of bounds. So second down, they keep it on the ground. And then getting it inside the 20 is Aaron Dumas. Michael Bow, the tackle. Bo, a very active defender for them. Kate brings the left tackle really nice breaking down that left side there third and short they've been good on third down three for seven change at quarterback Trey Hall comes in to run that play and picks up a yard Wilson, they split out at receiver, but they brought in Hall to take the direct snap. Now fourth and short. Keep in mind, they went for it on fourth down just a couple of minutes ago and couldn't pick it up. A little surprised they're not considering a field goal here to try to go up by four points. Wilson on fourth down. He's in trouble. We'll throw it up. Erickson's up, and he's got it. Touchdown, Lobos. Oh, 
Erickson's first touchdown of the year. And the redshirt sophomore from right here in Albuquerque. A great job by Wilson. He just kept backing up to give himself a little more time before Erickson broke free in the end zone. Shelley on for the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. Andrew Erickson. I said he looked a little gronkish earlier on. How about now? Comes wide up in the end zone. He just works to get away. The good separation he gets. He's in man coverage that time and runs away from the defender. And Wilson loves it. And what a half for Terry Wilson. 18 of 25, 234 yards and two touchdowns. They hit the jackpot, landing him as a graduate transfer out of the University of Kentucky. So in a little less than two minutes, they go five plays, 48 yards. That's when the turnovers are so costly. You have a chance, if you're the Aggies, to really build some momentum. You stop them on fourth down, and then the next thing you do is you turn the ball over, and then the Lobo offense just drives it down and tops it off of that Andrew Erickson touchdown. Steinkamp will kick it off. Still time for the Aggies to work with, but they've used all three of their timeouts. <laughs> 207 remaining in the half, first and 10. Maldonado on time. Big play for the Aggies. Will anyone catch him? It's a foot race. He'll take it the distance. Touchdown, Aggies! Isaiah Garcia Castaneda. Seventy-five yards. Garcia Castaneda. What a play! Got him in some space, and he said, "Hey, I'm the fastest guy on the field. Catch me if you can." What about Dino Maldonado, though? <laughs> Well, when these two teams played back in 2019, New Mexico won 55 to 52. I, I think suddenly we may have a shootout on our hands. Alberton on for the extra point. Kick is up and it is good. And it's back to a one point game. Isaiah Garcia Casaneda comes inside and then it's speed and the angle away from all the defenders that can catch him. What a great feeling it is to get your team right back in the ball game that quickly with just a lightning quick strike. Look how open he gets, how he's out in space, and it makes it an easy throw for Dino Maldonado in that backup quarterback role. It didn't look like a backup, did he? No, he looks really good. <laughs> I think even if Johnson his wrist is good to go. I think at this point you got to ride the hot hand. For this game, absolutely. Castaneda, he, he's got the jersey out there. Number two, he's got some, he's a player. He's got some speed. All right, recent scores between these two teams. Lobos 2019 win 55-52. 2017 Aggies win 30-28. Back in 2016, 32-31 Aggies. 2014, 38-35. Mike, I think. I think we might be in the right place at the right time this, this week. But this is what happens in rivalry games, right? You, everything that you think might happen, and then the momentum shifts. That's why you love these games. Manny Logan Green from three yards deep will bring it out. Gets a good block. A couple of good blocks across the 30. And gets it out to the 36-yard line. Outstanding return. And flags come in late, some extracurriculars after the play. Fortunately, this is also sometimes a symptom of a rivalry <laughs> game. A little too excited. You want to let them play, and you understand that there is a higher level of emotion in this. But as the officiating crew, it's your job to keep things under 
control. On sportsman like Kanda, kicking team, number 24. 15 yard penalty, first down. You know, if you're going to do something crazy, make sure you don't do it right in front of the official. Come on. And that's just. Well, they put your defense in a real tough spot, right? Well, it's that, but it's just uncalled for. There, uh, there's no situation. I don't care what happens. You cannot lose your composure like that. And to your point, yes, now the after effect shows how your actions affect the whole team. So the ball just inside Aggie territory, first and ten. Wilson with time. And between two defenders wow. caught Kyle Jarvis, the big tight end. This ball drops right in his hands, but it's Kyle Jarvis that goes up and gets it and holds on to it. You got somebody pulling at you, taking you down. A couple of guys credit Kyle Jarvis with coming down with that nice ball. Wilson completes it to Bobby Wooden, and Wooden picks up four yards on first down. Now, if you're New Mexico, you'd actually like to kind of slow this down a hair. There's a flag on the play because you'd like to leave New Mexico State very little time to work with. Yep. And the Lobos can't run the football. And it's not like this offense is. Uh, <laughs> it's not one dimensional by any yeah, means. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like they uh, they can't run a little uh, a little zone at you. They ran it for 125 yards last week in their win on Thursday night against Houston Baptist. But one thing that's been a really bright sign for New Mexico is having the stability. All four of the really key coaches, head coach, offense coordinator, defensive coordinator, all those guys are back. First time since 2016, 17. They've got those three key guys back. They have four full time coaches who are New Mexico grads. So this is a group of coaches led by Danny Gonzalez who really know what they're trying to do here, and they believe that they can make this program an elite program in the Mountain West. Well, it's the familiarity that makes it easy. Illegal low block, number five, offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. It's Kyle Jarvis. So Kyle Jarvis comes up with a big catch on the play before, and now he gets called for the low block. Let's come back and make it up next time. They have plenty of time to work with and all three timeouts. Not sure what the confusion is here. Unless it's the spot. I know the fans get restless, but these officials are doing their very best to make sure they get it right, even if it means taking a few extra seconds. There has been a lot of discussion in this game, though. Confusion as to the status of the clock. It's first down. All right, well, they didn't move the clock, so it's at 124. New Mexico already with 325 yards of offense. They had 308 in their win, so they've exploded offensively in this first half. Wilson to throw. Had an open man, can't make the catch. Scruggs, who had the big catch in the opening play from scrimmage. Just a little bit too much on that ball. And that's a tougher throw, really. You know, you've got to kind of throw it over the defender. A couple of receivers that were open, a little bit easier throw. I think Terry Wilson kind of made up his mind a little early that time.
Wilson will dump it off. And it's incomplete. Alexander, the intended target, the throw a little bit low. So now it's third and long. Wait, what are you thinking here? Just get in position to kick the field goal? Absolutely. Nice pocket for Wilson. Now he's going to move to his right, buy some time, and he'll take off and run. And out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Terry Wilson would have been better served to have taken off and run with that earlier. I know as a quarterback, and you're taught, you know, I want you to throw it down the field, but if he takes off before the defenders get a chance to adjust, I think he picks up another 10, 15 yards on that run, and maybe a first down. Andrew Shelley on for the field goal attempt. He's had a rough first half. He's missed a couple of field goal chances. From 45, kick has the distance, and it is good. Andrew Shelley shakes off a couple of misses and delivers the field goal. That's looking like it's go. Well, snuck it in there, didn't he? <laughs> a little, a little oh. body English there. Yep, yep. Hooking, and hooking. <laughs> he needed that one to get some confidence back. Now the Aggies don't have timeouts, but keep in mind with the college game, you pick up first downs, the yeah. clock stops. So, and we have seen from their kicker, he has got a huge leg, Ethan Albertson. Now to your point, you talk about again the first down. You don't have to guard the sidelines as much, right? It's off, good strong boot, no chance at a return. And a and a helmet has come off, and again, it, it continues to get chippier out on the field. Both of these teams are trying to build a culture, right? And yep. part of it is not to lose this, and, you know, it looks like you got... I, I think know. once you lose the helmet, you're no longer fighting. Or you shouldn't. Yeah, you should run. It's, it's not a fair yeah. fight with yeah. no helmet. Yeah, he just got taken down there, and the helmet came off. All right, Maldonado has been brilliant off the bench. Eight for 14, 125 yards and two touchdowns. They're going to keep it on the ground. An interesting decision, Jawan Price. And now the clock stops. Now maybe you're more aggressive. It looked like they were thinking, let's go conservative. But you get the big running play, and you still got 49 seconds. And you got a field goal kicker with a strong leg. Well, you think about this air raid, and all of a sudden they're running the football because Maldonado's in there, and it's working for him. Good protection, Maldonado. And that's goals picked off, held that one a little too long. Quick coaching tip. Antonio you, Hunt there in coverage. <laughs> you cannot stare to the left at your receiver and then throw a lazy little pass over there. And the, that by all right should have been picked off, and it could have been a pick six. They'll keep it on the ground. And this time, Price can't get away from Jarek Reed. And now I think New Mexico State may be content to just the clock expire. I mean, why not take a shot or two here on second down? I'm thinking that myself. And then Jawan Price, I'd love to see him be a little more north and south with that, right? He's trying to break it out, get outside, get outside. I think he just kind of get up and take what's there. I don't think they're going to run a play here. No, I think Doug Martin said, I've seen enough here in the first half. Mm -hmm. And here are the numbers from the first half. All kinds of total yards for both teams. Uh, penalties did hurt the Lobos, particularly on one drive where 30 yards of it worked in favor of the Aggies. Uh, what was your takeaway from the first half, Mike? Well, I'm a little bit surprised at the uh, rush yards for both teams, but especially for New Mexico State, not really a part traditionally of that air raid offense, but it was what gave them their success when Dino Maldonado came into quarterback. 
and fill in for the injured Jonah Johnson. So the Aggies will start out with the football. Here's a look at the leaders from the first half. That guy, Dino Maldonado, 114 yards through the air. Maldonado, just a single carry, but it went for 37 yards. And Jared Wyatt, three catches for 23 yards to lead the way, but they have spread the ball around nicely. A lot of guys with catches for New Mexico. Mexico State, rather. Seven different receivers have caught the football. Four-point game. First to 10 from the 25. Mind everybody, Jonah Johnson is now officially out for the game with a wrist injury. It'll be Dino Maldonado. And they keep it on the ground. Jawan Price, not much room over the left side. Price, a redshirt freshman from Peoria, Arizona. But think about halftime, what the discussion has got to be. Okay, we've got a quarterback that really hasn't practiced, didn't prepare. We're going to throw him out there. Can we become one dimensional and just run the football? And of course, the answer to that is absolutely not. Maldonado going up the left sideline. His receivers got a step, oh. had the football, but couldn't bring it in. Jared Wyatt, that was a very good throw. This is so close. And they were talking about can you stay one dimensional? No, you go deep. It's in the hands. Jarrett White had to turn and contort his body. Boy, that was close to being a gigantic play here at the beginning of the second half. So Wyatt missed opportunity there. Brings up third down. In the first half, they were two for six on third down. Maldonado on time completes it. And the good hard work after the catch results in a first down. Andre Bodison with the catch. And Bodison's had an impact in this football game. Good looking wide receiver. If you're a wide receiver and you know you've got a quarterback that doesn't have a lot of experience, you need to get open in space and make yourself a big target. Samuels the ball carrier. Second and nine coming up for the Aggies. It's Amari Samuels. Moves to his left, solid gain. He gets it to the 45-yard line, brings up third and two, and the Aggies showing a willingness to run the football. Absolutely, and Amari Samuel, I love the fact that Samuels runs, attacks the defense, makes them commit, and then cuts it back out and turns it back up for an extra three yards. Maldonado's going to keep it himself. He's in some trouble, will not get the first down. Stop at the line of scrimmage by Patrick Peak and a couple of his buddies on the defensive side of the ball. Traditionally, very hard to run against a Rocky Long defense. It's hard to know where the guys are coming from. And the New Mexico defense last week only allowed negative six rush yards. You know what else it's hard to do against a Rocky Long defense? Score? Pass. <laughs> Pass, run. <laughs> You name it, <laughs> one of the very best coaches in America. He's been doing it for a long time. He's back home. Legend. <laughs> Met his wife in college and he coached here, went to San Diego State. Now he's back as a defensive coordinator. He's got lots of friends and family here. We're thrilled to have him back. Fair catch, Manny Logan Green. He faced defenses. Terry Wilson in some trouble from his own end zone. We'll throw that out of bounds. Ooh. The outside the pocket? I believe he was. He took a couple of steps to his right, I think, to make sure he was out of the pocket. Chris Ojo bringing the pressure, number three for New Mexico State. Look at New Mexico State saying, hey, that, yeah. that's, that's got to be. Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator, we enjoyed our, our Zoom conversation with him earlier this week. Yeah. And now there's a flag. Yeah. This could be a disaster for the Lobos. 
So intentional grounding. And it's a safety. Yep. Well, Mike, you were on it, so let's see. Yeah, he took two steps. Boy, I'm not sure he's in the pocket there. He took three giant steps to his right. Well, the, but the call was grounding, so there's no receiver over there, and so he's just throwing the ball to get it away. So I believe that's what the call is. Wow. Yeah, I mean, look, there was a – Erickson was on that side of the field. He clearly right. – we all know that he wasn't trying to complete it. <laughs> but, boy, that's that's a stiff penalty right there. Well, and the Two part, points and the football. But the part of it is it took so long to make the call, right? That's why you wonder about, you know, how, what was the decision-making process here? All right, pocket, he's on the head. Okay, he's so definitely he's outside out of, of the pocket. He's out of the pocket. All right, I mean, look, he was clearly just trying to get rid of it. There was a receiver on that side of the field. Normally, you give the quarterback the benefit of the doubt there, don't you? Apparently not. Wow. Nobody. Huge call. It's a two-point game, and New Mexico will have to uh, give the ball right back to New Mexico State. It's interesting. It's almost like a role reversal about the – the pressure that Frank Spaziani is sending with his defense. And let's give credit where credit's due. Mexico State last week against San Diego State. I mean, they were giving up no numbers in that. They only gave up six completions in that entire game. And when you think San Diego State, you think it's uh, it's going to be going down the field all the time. So battle of defense coordinators. Well, in a game full of big plays, mark that one. Jawan Price on the return. He's got a full head of steam. Oh, but he stumbles and is down at the Aggies 45-yard line. So a great return. Trip to the end, and then there's a flag late. Yeah, he just kind of loses his footing. I yeah, oh, the guy oh, got a little piece little of him. Piece of yeah. That. That's not the turf monster. He doesn't get credit for the tackle there. And then, do we have flopping going on out here? I'm just wondering. We're going to see what happens here and what this flag is about. Well, that's a flop, but, you know, sell it. You, know, you, you know, get a minor in drama. So it's an unsportsmanlike conduct wow. against New Mexico on Dion Hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, things that go in the Lobos way here at the start of the third quarter. A couple of big calls have gone against them. And wouldn't you assume the opposite was going to be the case? You lose your quarterback, right? You got somebody who hasn't come in and played that much at all. But a couple of things on special teams, big play on defense, <laughs> and you're in business inside Lobo territory. Aldonado, and that is broken up. Great contact. Dante Martin in coverage, delivered the blow. The safety for New Mexico State, their first since November 12, 2016 at Arkansas State. Makes it easy on a defender when he knows the ball is going to go there because the fact of the matter is Dino Maldonado is picking who he's going to throw the ball to early, and he's locked on to him, and he's tipping off the defenders. Second and 10. Maldonado, pump fake. And that's incomplete. He's trying to split the two defenders. Jared Wyatt, the target. Jared Reed in coverage. I love the story of Jared Reed because coach said that he was really hard on him. He didn't start the last two games of the season and almost said he was pushing to see what he was about, what kind of kid he was. And then seeing his transformation, he compared him to Demonte Casey, who played at San Diego State, who now plays in the NFL. Uh, so quite a turnaround for Jarek Reed. Third down. Blitz is coming. Maldonado gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. The receiver had barely turned around there. Terrell Warner and Maldonado took a big hit. Joey Noble bringing the pressure. Dino Maldonado, the tough kid out of Santa Maria, and he gets drilled after throwing that football. Good pressure from Noble. 
He's the leader of the defense. So the Aggies play the field position game. They'll try to pin the Lobos deep in their own territory. Josh Carlson on to punt. Maggie Logan Green set for a chance at a return. See if he tries to angle punter some credit. Josh Carlson, how about that? That was like a perfect sandwich. We'll be right back. All right, first and 10 for the Lobos. They'll keep it on the ground with Bobby Cole. Good hard running from Cole. Just get swim moves done on them. Just like Coach Long knows how to defend. I got you. All right, they pick up the first down, and this is in Bobby Cole trying to get another first down. This time it's a gain of nine. So he had a gain of 10, followed by a gain of nine. Lobos now have rushed the football for 82 yards. I tell you what, I, if I were the Lobos, I wouldn't mind continuing in that vein to kind of restore order, right? Get everybody calmed down. Let's just start running the football after the safety. Keep it on the ground. Luke Wysong picks up the first down. Gain of five on the play. Wysong's gotten touches in, in multiple situations. They want to get him touches in space. We've got an injured player. It's Josh Ferguson. Fortunately for him, he's right by his own bench. So hopefully he'll be okay. The redshirt freshman from Katy, Texas. And again, which school you think has the most spirited fan base? Get that QR code. Get involved. Wilson has had a magnificent game. 19 of 29, 259 yards, couple of touchdowns. They've had success on this drive, running the football. They started deep in their own territory. And again, it's Cole, and another big gain on first down. This time, it's a gain of seven. No, I love how they're doing it. You know, they get over that bunch formation, and everybody's looking to that side, and then it's just a handoff. Look at the push. Look at how they stay on their blocks. Kyle Stapley stays on his man, stays on his man, and that's how you reward a patient running back. You stay on him. He finds a hole, and it's a huge gain, eight yards. Tackle there by Torin Union, the nephew of Gabrielle Union and Dwayne Wade. Talk about some star power in your family. Second and short. And the catch is made. Trace Buck Bruckler, pardon me, with the catch. He continues to make big plays from the tight end position. Boy, Trace Buckler, Andrew Erickson have really been able to find some spots and get open, but that wasn't necessarily making yourself a big target. That was Terry Wilson just finding and hitting him in stride. 22 yards on the play for Bruckler. Wilson to the air and the receiver fell down, so not much of a gain there for Lanier. You know, going back to the college football game, there's a lot more emotion. There's more ebbs and flows, and especially in a rivalry game like this. So I really love this drive and the fact that the Lobos came out, ran the football a little bit, let everybody calm down, and then you start to forget about the safety and just run your offense. It's Cole. Good hard running. And he is down at the 27-yard line, Torin Union the tackle. See what's going on between the tackles here. See the push. And when I talk about patience, he doesn't run right up there. He's letting things develop. And what's happening is the offensive line for the Lobos, they are maintaining their blocks. And that's why he's able to do that. And that's why they're getting these big games. Now there is Torn Union, as mentioned. That's quite a bit of star power. A movie star and future NBA Hall of Famer. They keep it on the ground with Dumas, and Dumas has a first down. So Cole's got 76 yards on 10 carries. I can do that math. 7.6 yards per carry. And then Aaron Dumas, what I like about him, it's not exactly thunder and lightning, but the thing about Dumas is he is that straight ahead, 
run a gap runner. Erickson wants to throw it. He'll go to the end zone. Boy, this pass interference. Where's the flag? The receiver completely got bumped before the ball got there. Jace Taylor, the intended target. Let's take another look. Maybe my eyes are playing trick on me, tricks on me, but I could have swore he got bumped as the ball arrived. Erickson will come in motion and see the problem with trick plays like this, he's going to throw this, right? This is his chance. <laughs> yeah, but he, the, the receiver got hit well before the ball got there. He couldn't even make a play. Look, he yep. just got hit. Yep. And I don't think he's going to catch it either way. Dumas. And a couple yards going to bring up a critical third down. New Mexico started out really good on third down, but they're now just three for nine. A little bit surprised by the trick play. Well, they've been running it so successfully. Yeah. yeah. When, when you're hitting them for six, seven, eight yards a run, most people would take that. Logan Green in motion. Wilson gets it out quickly. It is caught. Not enough for the first down. It's going to bring up fourth and two. And you took Elijah Queen the catch. It appears they're, for the moment they're going to go for it. They're going to bring Bobby Cole in the game on fourth and short. They're going to bring in a jumbo package, a couple of big offensive linemen are trotting onto the field. Let's go. Greg Brown comes into the game along with Ben Davis for their jumbo package. Let's go back to that earlier fourth down, right? They got stuffed with this package. So let's see what happens. Fourth and two. Wilson gives it up. No place to go, and the Aggie defense comes up with another stop. Eric Marsh, the play. And he played well last week. Next man up, play, got in for the injured man, and he's there to stuff the Lobos. They're in for the duration. They don't look like they're heading home. Well, what time is it locally? It's 7.35. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Aggies, first to 10. Dino Maldonado off the bench in relief has been outstanding for the Aggies. And he's going to keep it himself. He made one guy miss, and he stumbles forward. At least turned it into a positive play. Rolling on the field as if the player was down. Prior not bad, fumble. not bad. If you sit down. there and you've got a zone read there, he decides to keep it. Oh, he's, he's fighting. He's fighting. I, oh, yeah. He was down. But I, I love the scrappiness. <laughs> I mean, you come in on the bus today, I'm not going to play. This should be pretty easy. And next thing you know, you're in the middle of the rivalry game. And look, you're showing you can play. Yeah. Right? Lights are on. He's delivering for the Aggies. And that ball batted down behind the line of scrimmage. Cody Moon, 58. Had an impact on this game, has an interception. His first career interception. He's from right here in Albuquerque. Kano Vista High School. Cody Moon's been coming from a couple of spots, too. Third down. Crowd getting into it here at University Stadium. Pressure coming. And hold everything. We've had a lot of after play skirmishes. Well start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. It's third down. At Sage Doxtatter, their outstanding left tackle. He is their best lineman, the Canadian, the captain. Could have gone to the CFL, decided he wanted to come back. Still had work to do at New Mexico State as he hopes to get drafted by an NFL team coming up next spring. Crowd is engaged. 
having an impact on that end of the field. Hard for the Aggies to communicate. Third and 12. Will Coach Long bring pressure? They're showing pressure. And they'll keep it on the ground. Samuels, the ball carrier. And they will be forced to punt deep from their own end. So nice job defensively from New Mexico. Tavian Combs making the play. Combs had a huge game in week one with 12 tackles. This Samuels looks frustrated. And this is where I think the Lobos have kind of stemmed the tide here, right? After that safety, momentum could have gone the other way for you. You drive down, you didn't convert, but now your defense comes up big for you, and you force the Aggies to punt. Carlson to punt. Logan Green to return. Carlson a good boot. Logan Green, fair catch at his own 40-yard line. We step away, we come back. Terry Wilson and the Lobo offense be back on the field. Ready for the upcoming week of football and I'll look back as well. It's Wilson on the quarterback keeper. He picks up three yards for Torin Union, who's suddenly making a real presence in this third quarter. He's had a few tackles. Terry Wilson with the keeper. And they'll keep it on the ground. I wonder what the conversation was, Mike, at the half, because it seems like their philosophy offensively has changed dramatically. There was a lot of attempts to push the ball down the field through yeah. the air, but here in the third quarter, they've looked to run the football. Well, I, I think that's something that they do well, and so maybe you, you get away from running the ball sometimes. I mean, literally, you get excited about some things that you see, and you've got some opportunities there. But then you get down to it, like, if we want to win this game, we need to establish the line of scrimmage. Uh-oh, Wilson just has to fall on the football. We'll have to check. I, I thought the snap was, was at least good enough for him to get two hands on it. But that's going to bring up fourth down. So, so that will count as a tackle for a loss. That makes six of them for the Aggies. We give a lot of credit to the defense. Frank Spaziano, defense coordinator, has got the Aggies playing good football. Especially on fourth down. Rodriguez on to punt. Lawrence Dixon is set for a chance at a return. Boomer of a punt. Dixon just lets that go, and he will. And good decision as it'll be a touchback. How many times? 58 yards on the punt. Sorry, how many times you see a return, man? He's going back, 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 and he loses where he's at. That, that, to me, is just brilliant. You get on the 10, stop it, let it go. But I also like fool them with the fake or the fair catch signal so they all stop, just in case it, it gets the kind of balance that goes straight up in the air. No, I love the gamesmanship. Yeah. Because, and now, you, you know, we're talking about the hardest thing, in my opinion, to do in football, to stand there and try to right. catch that ball in the air while somebody's running full speed at you. Maldonado has cooled off. He's now 9 of 21. They'll keep it on the ground and tackle for a loss there by New Mexico. Price, the ball carrier, and no place to go as Langston Murray, 54. And this guy has transformed himself. In high school, he was 360 pounds. In spring ball, he was 320. Lost over 40 pounds to be ready for fall camp. Coach basically told him you're not going to play, and he forced his way into the lineup. Big play here, and it doesn't happen. As they were looking to go deep down the field to Robert Downs, Antonio Hunt in coverage. But you got to give Murray a lot of credit. You know, they said, hey, you're probably never going to play here. But he said, you know what? I'm going to lose the weight. I'm going to force you to make a decision and get me in the game. But do you know how many players, if they would have heard that, they would have just folded their tent yep. and gone away? So what a testament. They think he's now might be down under 300. Yeah, they've listed him at 280 now. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Third and long. Maldonado has to be careful here, deep in his own end. Blitz is coming. Maldonado is going to run for it. No place to go. Joey Noble makes the play for the Lobos. 
what felt like a shootout for a while. Suddenly both defenses have raised the level of their play. In the second half so far, we've only had a safety in the third quarter. And I'm a little surprised at what I'm seeing from the Lobo defense. Not that it's not good, but it's just they're not showing much. You know, they're not run, running Ray Lutelli around and all these different spots. It's just kind of heads up, little stunts, but nothing too fancy. Carlson to punt. Manny Logan Green, and this time he'll have a chance on the return. Ran into one of his own guys, cuts it back into Aggie territory. Across the 40, directing traffic at the 20. And knocked out of bounds at the eight yard line. We're gonna be first and goal for the Lobos. Listen to these fans. Talk about the excitement. Watch him, he runs into traffic, fights some things off, and then as you pointed out, he's directing traffic out there. Pretty good at it. 53-yard return for Manny Logan Green. They talk about he's got one of those fast twitch kind of bodies, and he showed it right there. Oh. I, I liked it, out there directing. <laughs> you go here, you block that guy, you block that guy. And the Lobos are in business here. Let's see if Terry Wilson and the offense could take advantage. As they've got first and goal at the eight. And then not much room there for Bobby Cole. I don't remember the exact stats. Someone can tell me, but I feel like the Lobos haven't had a punt return for a touchdown in like the longest amount of time of any yeah. team in America. Yeah, I think that is right. And so that was right there. I mean, he was eight yards away from putting an end to that streak. Boy, Frank Spaziani, the defensive coordinator for the Aggies, he is loving sending guys into the gaps. He is loving the penetration, which makes me think we're going to see some counter gap pretty soon. Second and goal from the seven. Wilson throws it up. And he actually was just throwing that one away. Jace Taylor was the closest receiver in the area, but Wilson was running out of time. So third and goal, what are you thinking here, Mike? You gotta have Terry Wilson. He's gotta have the ability to throw the football. I don't know, you know, if you run the ball, yeah. Are you gonna get close? Fine. You wanna get in the end zone here. So if it's me, Trying to roll him to the right. Third and goal. Wilson, the throw, and he didn't give his receiver a chance. The momentum took him far outside the end zone. Boy, well, just running straight to the corner of the end zone here, so you got to fade that over the defender. A, a nice job by Torin Union there. Well, the ball's thrown late. Yep. Right? So, really no chance there. Torin Union. What Making a game. plays. Yeah, they said he's been playing well. He has stood out here in the second half. Shelley on for the field goal attempt. You realize my pet peeve in college football that they make these poor college guys kick it from this kind of an angle. In the NFL, it's always a straight kick. This is an angled kick. And no problem. He drills it through the uprights from 24 yards. So 27 to 22. Lobos in front. Their first points of the second half. Just 36 seconds remain in the third quarter. Well, this rivalry game has really turned into a good one. They've played some classics in the last decade. And after not getting a chance to play each other last year, they're certainly making up for it tonight. Well, a rivalry that started in 1894, realizing that New Mexico didn't become a state until 1912. So this rivalry has existed longer than this has been a state. Pretty amazing. They're great to play in. They are great to play in. I remember having a coach saying, you're never going to forget these games. Of course, he's speaking from experience. 
And I don't think these players are going to forget tonight. However, it turns out, but the fact that we get a two point ball game. Twenty seven twenty two our score. Juwan Price is going to take it in. All right, it's time to vote again. Time for the player of the game. Scan the QR code on the screen to make your pick. We went with both quarterbacks. On your left, Dino Maldonado. Well, I think he's looking for the upset in this player of the game vote against the established stud, Terry Wilson. Maldonado off the bench. Give the guys some credit. The, the Lobo has got the lead, but the Aggies are right there. The leading indicator of the player of the game is going to be who wins. All right, here's the QR code. It'll be after the play. Get your phones ready. Swim move last time. How about a rip to the TV? A rip this to time? the TV, yeah. okay. And first to 10 from the 25. Oh. Give it to Price, and he is buried by Joey Noble. Joey Noble, man. He is coming on strong in the second half. So quick, good first step. Seems to have a sense. Although, nobody's really guessing out there. Everything is very structured. All right, Rocky three Lundy. quarters complete in this rivalry game, and we've got a five-point game headed to the fourth quarter. The fans are loving it. We're having a great time, too. We're coming back for the start of the fourth quarter. Our score through three quarters. Look at that score in the third, 3-2. It's like we had a baseball game break out in the third quarter. All right. We are set for the start of the fourth quarter. All right, well, Mike Lamb, glad you're with us on Stadium. Mount West football off to a great start. Malden out all kinds of time. He's going to decide, no, I'm going to run for it. And he's brought down, and a late flag comes helmet in. This helmet. could be a late hit. This is helmet to helmet. Let's get another look at it as the officials discuss it. New Mexico almost lost the player in the first half, Devin Sanders, but they ruled it was not targeting without a second look. Hard to know what happened here. Let's see. Right at the end. Oh, that's that's a definition of targeting. Personal foul. Personal foul. Targeting. Defense number 12. The previous play is under further review. All right. Well, I thought for sure it was targeting and that Sanders was going to be gone. So I'm going to leave this to the analyst. Does he stay in the game or is he done? Okay, but if you recall, when we looked at the replay of that one, we thought that was clearly. Right, but that time the helmet didn't hit the helmet. It was below the helmet. This was helmet to helmet. So this is a little bit easier. Yeah. Well, I've proven that I don't know anything. So <laughs> I'm going to stay out of this. I mean, but you at home judge. Well, I mean, there it is. But that's helmet to helmet. See, that's the spirit of the rule right there is to protect the player and to not have them so subject to concussions and, and trauma to the brain. So that's really when you teach it to an official, it's those two helmets coming together. And I don't know if Maldonado, you know, I, I think, you know, he gave as much as he got there, but the, here's the point. You don't want that to happen. You don't yeah. want players to be going through that. It took a long time for football to realize the damage caused by helmet to helmet, and I applaud that they have now made it a priority to eliminate it from the game. After further review, the ruling on the field of targeting is confirmed. Number 12 is disqualified from the contest. All right, so Antonio Hunt is done. He is a big part of the rotation in the secondary, but they do have some depth back there. So first and 10 for the Aggies, and it's another 15-yard penalty against the Lobos. Penalties have really been kind of the differentiating, differentiating factor so it's for the Lobos. Nine for 96 yards yeah. in the game. 
Maldonado, pressure coming, going downfield. Too much on the throw. But you don't mind doing that to keep the defense honest, right? They think that you've got a backup guy that ne can't necessarily throw the football, so he's taking some shots down the field. He has completed a couple of yeah. them. But his numbers are way down. Yeah. I mean, he's still stuck on nine completions at the moment. Well, his heart probably started again. <laughs> Getting thrown into a game like that, let me tell you something. <laughs> Not an easy thing to do. Maldonado on time. Robert Downs the third, the catch, and that'll move the sticks. Nice throw and catch there, right on schedule. Nice timing, he's got good protection, stands in the pocket, lets Downs get open, and here's the difference. When you hit somebody in stride, you don't have to make them contort their body. First down. Rocky Long's defense is showing that they're bringing a bunch of extra guys, and they do. Maldonado hit on the throw, balls up in the air. Oh, it should have been intercepted. Two guys fought for the football. You know, Noble who? brought the pressure, but this should have been picked. Well, you know, you talk about it looks like everybody's come. Look who drops in the middle. 54, Langston Murray drops out from the nose tackle spot, and then he's going up to try to get the interception. Well, give credit to the receiver for the Aggies who went, decided to become a defensive back yep. here. And he saves what would have been an interception by Langston Murray. Well, we didn't get a look at it there, but credit to the Aggies keeping that from being a turnover. Pressure coming. Maldonado gets rid of it. Beautiful throw and catch. Jawan Price, Maldonado with pressure in his face. Jawan Price is on a wheel route out of the left side. Maldonado knows he's going to get hit, and look how he dropped it in there. Uh, credit Jawan Price, though. Man, what a drive they're putting together. What a tough quarterback. Keep it on the ground with Price, and he picks up called call a yard and a half. Dante Martin in on the tackle. Dewan Price, they really like his hands out of the backfield. That was a critical catch. Again, pressure coming, Maldonado, and that is well defended. Patrick Peake in coverage there, defended it beautifully, extended the right hand to knock the ball away. Patrick Peake comes in for the ejected Antonio Hunt, and watch him reach over at the last second, doesn't make contact with the receiver. It's hard to play it any better than that. Crowd getting into it, urging this Lobos defense to come up with a stop and force a field goal attempt. Third and nine. And that's it complete. Garcia Castaneda, the intended target. And they will attempt a field goal. Ethan Albertson has been terrific tonight in the kicking game. I don't think I've seen the same look from Rocky Long. You know, I think it, it, if, you, if there's been 10 plays on defense, I think it's been 10 different looks. 37 yard attempt. He's connected in the game from 43 and 33. Albertson, the kick. Oh, this guy's money. Delivers the kick and it's back to a two point game in Albuquerque. Cyclones. Next up for the Lobos will be Texas A&M. 
And Dumas, fair catch at his own seven yard line. So the Lobos will start out at their own 25 yard line, leading by just two points. Well, the Lobos have made a dramatic change in the way they've gone about their offense. They've been running the football. Is that setting themselves up for maybe play action on first down to take another shot down the field? I think that's clearly, you know, something that is a possibility, although that's not necessarily what they've been doing with Terry Wilson. He is, everything's been kind of a zone read up to this point. They've run a little bit of zone. They've run a little bit of gap. I don't know if you're going to draw the linebackers up at this point. They're going to reset the clock to 12:32. Fullback. Yeah, we haven't seen this formation at all today. And Wilson will give it to Alexander, and Alexander will be stopped after a gain of two yards. And a silly penalty after the play was done. The whistle had already blown, and that's going to be unnecessary roughness. I think it's Garrett Bishop, 96, the freshman. Well, it's a freshman play. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 96, 15 yard penalty. First down. It's just kind of a selfish thing to do. And the staff takes him out. You see Doug Martin there. They're like, get him out and let him think about it. That's just. I mean, you got him backed up, and then you give him 15 yep. yards. Now they're all of a sudden at their own 42, and it opens up the playbook for offense coordinator Derek Warheim. Wilson all day, down the field, wide open, caught. Manny Logan Green, touchdown, Lobo. Yeah, okay. 58 yards. Manny Logan Green gets the touchdown. Wilson's got his third touchdown pass of the night. Shelley is on for the extra point. High snap, we get it down and Shelley connects. 34-25 our score. Slot receiver, wide open, blown coverage. Nobody sees him. And Terry Wilson with the easiest throw and catch of the night. Touchdown look, Lobos. Look at this, I mean, untouched. There's not a player within 10 yards of him. So Wilson is now thrown for 348 yards. Stein camp to kick it off. And no chance at a return for Jawan Price. Well, now the Aggies find themselves in a nine point hole with 12 minutes to go. Still plenty of time. Feel like they gotta, if they don't get points here, at least flip the field. I think you try to maintain composure here and not let it get away from you. And part of the things we've been talking about with that man, Dino Maldonado, he's been pretty composed in, is coming in here. After the injury to Jonah Johnson, he came in, has been able not only to run this offense, he's been pretty effective, and at times he's made some big plays. Don't make a mistake at your end of the field, though.
keep it on the ground, and it's Price. Picks up five yards on first down. Joey Noble, another tackle. To the point that you're talking about, let's be a little bit conservative down here. Young, new quarterback, young team, hasn't played a lot of football. And they will pick up the first down. Jarek Reed finally brought him down. Now you get a little more aggressive, right? You know that you want to get a score, but you're not sitting down at your own end of the field. You're really getting close to midfield, so you can start to be a little more aggressive with the playbook and where you go with the football down the field. First and 10. And that ball's up in the air, incomplete, looking for Terrell Warner. Dante Martin in coverage. He's been a, a busy guy tonight. When you play face the air raid, everybody in the secondary is going to feel like they're busy all night. Uh, I keep mentioning Joey Noble. He's up to six tackles, five solo, and two tackles for a loss. So 98 for New Mexico. Coach has raved about him, and he has delivered so far tonight. Bringing consistent pressure. Maldonado with time, and that ball is dropped. There is a flag down. That ball right in the hands of Jared Wyatt. Holding. Offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty, second down. That goes against Eli Johnson, the grad transfer from Old Miss, who they absolutely love. They love his leadership and his outgoing personality. Obviously, he's played in a, in a ton of games against some of the best talent in America in the SEC. He already has a master's degree from Ole Miss. He's working on a second master's here while he's playing football in education instruction. Maldonado, and he's lucky that didn't turn into more of a negative play there as he was scrambling. Garcia Castaneda, the intended target. Not a completion, but I look at that as an example of some composure by Dino Maldonado. Tons of pressure throws the ball away and doesn't throw it to a Lobo defender. Third and 20, down by nine in the fourth quarter. And that is complete at the 40 yard line. Garcia Castaneda makes the catch. Still about six yards shy of a first down. And the Aggies will be forced to punt. And forced is the operative word there. But Maldonado has just continued to impress. Yeah, I know, you don't get the first down there. You don't score. But I just, I love the composure of somebody who's just been thrust into this air raid offense with no notice. Carl Sinda to the Lobos. Looking to start 2-0 for the first time since 2005.
New Mexico leads New Mexico State 34-25. Just a hair under 10 minutes to go. Late night games in the Mountain West, including live on stadium at 10.30 Eastern time. It's Idaho State looking for the upset against the big, talented quarterback Carson Strong of the Nevada Wolfpack. Wolfpack looked great last week in their win at Cal. Offense, number five. Ten, five yard penalty. First down. Penalty goes against Kyle Jarvis. A lot of late games tonight for the Mountain West. Give us something to do. Go check out some games after we're done. Well, for it. First and 15. Bobby Cole picks up four yards on the play. If you're the Lobos right now, you'd like to just be able to run the football, pick up first downs. And they're built to do that with that offensive line, and you've got the likes of, you mentioned it, Bobby Cole and Aaron Dumas, who are not afraid and thrive between the tackles. If you're Wilson, use that whole play clock. It's now under 10. Keep it on the ground. Bobby Cole. Now it was first at 15. It's now third and two, and they've done it running the football. Now they have struggled in fourth and short. Multiple times they were unable to convert. Curious what they're going to do here on third and short. Well, Terry Wilson was crafty that time. Josh Ferguson just had a dead beat on him but he didn't know what to do, and he didn't make the tackle. He handed the ball off right at the last second. And they pitch it to the outside, pick up the first down and more. Aaron Dumas, terrific hard running. Talk about going north and south. You know what a luxury it is to have two running backs in your backfield that can do those things, Bobby Cole? And then you just saw the example of Aaron Dumas just keeps moving forward, moves towards the goal line, eyes downfield. Lobos up by two scores. Right now just slowly, methodically picking up first downs. Dumas the ball carrier, and he picks up two yards on first down. <laughs> Well, New Mexico next week is going to get a taste of football at its highest level. A trip to Texas A&M. Going to find out how good this team is next week. That'll be a tough, tough place to play. And Wilson throws it up, and it is caught. Luke Wysong, the true freshman, makes the catch. And they're into Aggie territory at the 40-yard line. Well, a big part of the air raid offense is you want to run that mesh, and then the other side you want the running back to have the run the wheel out of the backfield. And this is Luke Weissong, the second time tonight he has gone up and made a great catch in between two defenders. Keep it on the ground with Bobby Cole. He keeps turning those legs. Wilson completes it. And it's another first down. Manny Logan Green the catch where he's put together a terrific night. They call his position the H-back in this offense. And the two guys that play over there, Luke Wysong and Manny Logan Green, so back to back. Big catches and big first downs. Manny Logan Green leads the way in the receiving department. Seven catches for over 100 yards and that 58-yard touchdown. And it's Cole, and Cole still on his feet. If it wasn't for Chris Bell, he might still be running. And I love Cole on the delay. Gets it a little bit late here, but look at him. When I talk about him running between the tackles and not being afraid to do that, 
literally almost a shoestring that stops him. But it's just that forward body lean and being physical and not afraid to dish out some punishment. Maybe you'll take some once in a while, but that's tough running by Bobby Cole. The Lobos have run it for 175 yards, and Cole with that carry over 100 yards, 104. This time it's Alexander, and Alexander picks up a first down. It'll be first and goal inside the nine, and your offense coordinator, Derek Warheim. What a drive. This is exactly what you want to do late in the game, be able to pound the football and take time off the clock. Well, fullback alert, fullback alert. They're using a fullback in this offense right now. Brendan Davis has the lead blocker, and I think he's been a difference maker on a couple of big plays there, putting them in, him in conjunction <laughs> with Aaron Dumas, I think, is a, a pretty tough one-two punch in the backfield. Alexander, and he is going to get stopped at the four-yard line, where it'll be second goal. And Ferguson, who was shaken up earlier in the game, his helmet comes off, so he'll have to come out for a play. Well, it's pretty simple, right? If you're the Lobos, you're looking at the clock, you're looking at the scoreboard. You've had nothing but success here in the fourth quarter with running the football, and the only times this thing started to stall is when you got away from it. So it's a great time to establish that mentality. Yes, we can run the ball. Yes, we can wear you down. Yes, we can win in the fourth quarter. It's Cole, and he's wrapped up a couple yards before he scores. Nick Jackalone makes the play. Keep it going. You got Bobby Cole, you got Aaron Dimmis. I mean, at this point, if you're Derek Werheim, the offensive coordinator, it's kind of like, you know, throwing darts at the dartboard. Well, you know, which one of my running plays do I want to utilize? I've got an offensive line that is really starting to dominate. Now the Lobos four for seven in the red zone tonight. Looking to prove that. It's a five for eight. They're on the doorstep, third and goal. And it's Cole. Waiting for a signal. Still no signal. And it appears he did not get in. Watch him as he uh, gets close to the end zone. Contact. Oh, he lost oh, the football. Lost hey, yay, yay. Well, it's interesting. If you fumble and recover yourself, you don't get the yards there. They go for it on fourth down and get stuffed. So the third time tonight on fourth and short, New Mexico can't come up with the play, and the Aggies will have the football. 315 remaining, down by two scores. And you see here. All right, the people have spoken. We have our player of the game in a landslide. It's Terry Wilson, Jr. 25 of 38, 371 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Seems like a no-brainer. At the time we asked, though, the game was still in doubt. Jawan Price, the ball carrier, he'll get it across the tent. Over 700 of you voted. We appreciate you participating. About 80% of you thought it was Wilson. Those of you who didn't, must have gone to New Mexico State. You're saying there's bias in a rivalry game by the fans? <laughs> Just a tiny bit. And it's Price. And look, I give New Mexico State a lot, a lot of credit. I mean, they were huge underdogs coming in here. And just like against San Diego State, they competed. I mean, they were in right. that game. You know, it wasn't until the second half that San Diego State got some separation, 128-10. Look, they didn't play football last year. Yeah. And I give Doug Martin a ton of credit. Well, then out of going deep up the field, and that's going to be picked off. Jarek Reed, the interception. And let the celebration begin here in Albuquerque. Well, for the Aggies, they've been affiliated with a lot of different conferences. Twice they have been independent, including at the moment. Over the last 50 years, they've been in the Sun Belt twice. 
And right now they're an independent team, and it's tough sledding in college football if you're an independent and you're not BYU or Notre Dame. Bobby Cole, the ball carry, just picks up a couple yards. And the clock has stopped here. As New Mexico State used the timeout, we got a flag on the play, pardon me. Holding, offense, number 64, 10 yard penalty, first down. For those of you looking forward to watching Idaho State at Nevada, don't worry, we'll get you out there as soon as this game is completed. Noah Kozlov and Jordan Palmer with the call. From Reno, Wolfpack fans got to be fired up. Their first charge to the half. Third. So a timeout called. Beautiful night in Albuquerque. It's a nice slice of the moon there for us to look at. And certainly we focus a lot on the Mountain West here on Stadium, so stick around to watch the Wolfpack coming up next. Wysong, the ball carrier. Let's see if the Aggies are going to use all three of their timeouts. This will be timeout number two. I think you want to savor the moment if you're going to win a rivalry game, right? Uh, Terry Wilson, a brilliant performance. This is the first play from scrimmage. He had two receivers there. Not the way it's supposed to work out, but he made it happen. And then the long ball was continually there. Look at him when he's comfortable in the pocket. Look at that arm. To make that throw. And this is the easy one. Yeah, lone coverage. You're in the slot. Nobody covers you. And the danger is you get too excited. You know, throw it too far, but that was right on the money by our player of the game, Terry Wilson. Mississippi State, excuse me, Mississippi State, that's great. Uh, New Mexico State can stop the clock one more time. Keep it on the ground with Bobby Cole, who's had 20 carries for 108 yards in the game. He's had a terrific night. And the Lobos should savor this one. First 2-0 start since the 2005 season. Going back to last year, this makes four straight wins for Danny Gonzalez. Head coach, got to be feeling good about the direction of this program. Think about that last win of last season against Fresno State, then you come in here the way that you get started. And when Danny Gonzalez is trying to implement really a culture change, he talks about winning and everything that's going to have to transpire the way of doing things. He's talking about running some players away that, you know, really weren't getting in and buying in the program. And you know what's interesting? All of those players have stayed here and been wildly productive for him. So when, when we talked to him, I said, you're in the people business, aren't you, coach? Right? And everybody thinks it's all X's and O's, and it's not, but he is really in the people business and uh, Albuquerque native the guy next to him Rocky Long who was a head coach here for a long time and clearly his pedigree is one that is Lobo through and through those two guys got to walk into the locker room tonight and sit look at each other and go hey yeah you know, it might be going our way here so a great night for them in this program third down And they'll check it down. Alexander won't have nearly enough for the first down, but he gets just into Aggie territory. Nick Jackalone with the tackle. Think about those running backs. They have the a Lobos. nice stable. <laughs> Bobby Cole, Aaron Dumas, Chad Alexander, and Bobby Wooden have all contributed tonight in this rivalry game. We're going to put three more seconds on the clock, get it to a minute and nine seconds. So 69 seconds to go in this one. 
fourth down. And New Mexico will punt it. Aaron Rodriguez on the field. Lawrence Dixon will be deep for the Aggies. Can this be a springboard for recruiting for Danny Gonzalez? And I think so. They had a good crowd, almost 29,000 here. Got a good team, putting a good product on the field, entertaining brand of football. Yeah, it's a brave young man to not fair catch that with six guys coming down to get you. Lawrence Dixon shows no fear. So the Aggies will have exactly a minute to work with, down by nine points. Again, I want to remind you, coming up next, Idaho State and Nevada. Noah Kozlov on play-by-play. -play. Jordan Palmer, the quarterback guru, will be the analyst. Jordan's worked with so many of the quarterbacks who've been drafted in the last few years. He's the brother of Carson Palmer, and I've had the privilege of working with Jordan. Knows a lot about the games, a lot of fun to listen to. So check out Noah and Jordan, Idaho State, Nevada, as soon as this one is over. Aldonado completes it, and then it's dropped. Warner with the intended target, who is on time. Warner doesn't make the catch. He's a little frustrated with himself. Thinking about the situation that the Aggies have been in, and one, they didn't play football, a lot of time off, lots of new faces. But just thinking about Dino Maldonado and how he's conducted himself tonight in a very trying situation. Coming in and looking pretty good in some spots. A couple of things are a little rough, but that's to be expected when you haven't had a lot of reps and you weren't expected to be playing at all in this game. Well, it's been a long night for this officiating crew, and they're working on the clock. They wanted it 56. Maldonado completes it. It's Amari Samuels, the catch. Picks up seven yards. They can no longer stop the clock. So if you're Dino Maldonado, just take this opportunity. Continue to try to complete some passes. Keep getting that feel for this football. Maldonado buys some extra time. Now he's going to take off and run, and he'll go down after picking up the first down. The clock will stop for the chain gang to move into place, and then as soon as they're in place, we'll restart the clock. Maldonado completes it. It's Samuels who's kept in bounds, and that will be the final play of the game. Mike Lamb, it was a pleasure. Enjoyed working with you, and I'll see you next week. Sorry. Well, a solid win in the rivalry game for New Mexico, 2-0 for the first time since 2005. Coming up after the break, Idaho State and Nevada on behalf of Mike Lamb. I'm Ari Wolf saying so long from Albuquerque. Take care, everybody.